Ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome back to the channel and welcome to Chevron. So I have this app on my phone called Gas Buddy and this app's pretty cool because it shows you where all the local gas stations are at and how much they're charging at any given time. But dude, look at these prices right now. 439 for Arco. Arco is the cheapest gas known to existence. Mobile, 441, 445, 440. Like what? Gas is expensive right now. Twenty-one and a half gallons, eighty-eight dollars and ninety-two cents. So since the day I picked this truck up from the dealership, brand new, I put forty-two hundred and nine miles on it. I have not reset that trip mileage one time. So over that mileage right there, I've averaged thirteen point one miles per gallon. It does include highway and city as well. So let's do some quick math really fast. Forty-two hundred miles on the dash divided by thirteen point one equals three hundred and twenty gallons. Three hundred twenty gallons times about $4.20, $1,344 for gas in this truck over the last 4,200 miles, that is insane. But you know what, that's just what comes with the territory of driving stuff that's not stock. We do have the four inch lift kit, the four inches of lift here in the front, three inches of lift there in the rear, the 22 inch wheels, 35 inch tires, that right there is not a light setup whatsoever. And then we have these heavy amp research running boards. We do have the bed cover though, that should help reduce some drag against the tailgate and the Magnaflow exhaust as well. That should help increase the MPGs a little bit as well. 13.1 miles per gallon, it's not great. It isn't great, but it's not terrible either. I don't see gas prices going down anytime too soon with especially the increase in people traveling more often now. I don't think it's coming down anytime too soon. So we have a slight issue in regards to the wrap that I plan to do on this truck, the Metro Dynamic Lime Green. I am super excited for that color, but there's there's no word on when it's restocking. A lot of production has been very slow in the wrap world, so I'm not sure if I should pick a new color or wait this one out. If the green wrap doesn't restock in the next, I don't know, seven to 10 days, then I'm gonna have to pick a new color. If you guys have any recommendations on colors you'd love to see on this truck, let me know in the comments below because I'm pretty excited for green, but if it doesn't restock, then what are we gonna do? Check this out straight from McGoy's suspension parts. We have a mud flap delete kit for the Silverado. Now, for those of you guys who don't know, on the new body GM trucks, if you were to fully just delete the front two mud flaps, it's gonna leave behind these two holes on the outer side of the fenders facing out. I don't know what GM was thinking designing it that way, but that is the situation at hand. So if you want to erase those things completely because you have oversized tires that are rubbing on those mud flaps, then you're gonna have some holes left behind on your fenders such like mine. So what I did was I removed my factory mud flaps and I trimmed the inner portion, like where the fender liner is, that part right there, so I don't have any rubbing issues anymore. But the bottom portion of the mud flap, the mud flap part of the mud flap, if that makes sense, is still there. I don't think, is gonna look as good as not having that right there. At this point, the truck has a four inch lift on 35 inch tires. I don't think those mud flaps are anywhere near useful anymore. So there's that part of it right there. But I also think by removing the bottom part of the mud flap, it's gonna make the truck look a lot taller and overall just clean things up quite a bit. So this right here is the answer to all those problems right there. Although I can't install this until the new wrap goes on because not only is there a hardware part of the installation, but there's also like a 3M double-sided sticky tape that you peel off and that's what helps part that goes on the side of the fenders stick and lay a little more flush. So as soon as the truck gets wrapped, these things right here can go on. The only problem is I don't know when that is gonna be. All right, so I'm on MetroRestyling.com. That is one of the major West Coast distributors for all of the big wrap companies. I have all my brands here to choose from, finishes, colors, however you wanna browse for wraps. I really like using 3M or Avery. So we'll start here with 3M and just to kind of explain the difference between satin and matte because a lot of people misconstrue those two. Matte finishes have more of a dull finish to them. So they're much more of, of like a flat look, more of a primer look. So as you guys can see right here, the matte military green, for example, has a very like dull look to it. It's very, very flat. But if I go back over here to satin, I'll show you guys the difference between matte and satin. It's more of a, a sheen to it, looks more stealth, and just a richer look overall. I think it looks really, really nice. But the point is, and why I'm here, is to show you guys how limited stock is on all these colors. I mean, look at this. Even th uh, the satin black. Satin dark gray, like that's crazy right there. Satin battleship gray. That right there is what I wrap my Ram in. All these colors, look at this. Sold out, sold out, sold out. Like, there's hardly anything to choose from right now, except for things that aren't very desired, like satin 
apple green or satin canyon copper but check this out they do have satin flip volcanic flare now i did have this color on my truck before you guys loved it i loved it everybody around me loved it everyone that saw my truck out there and about loved the color let's see what avery dennison has i'll head on over to the satin finish section right here and see what they got Look at that, satin black's out too. That's crazy right there. In the wrap world, it's really rare to see a satin black out of stock because that's the most popular color, so they keep the most stock of that. It's a guaranteed sale. Now, I'm not sure if they're just not producing as much of these colors anymore or if wrapping your car became more popular. I'm not too entirely sure which direction to go with that, but I'm gonna assume it's more about them just not producing as many colors anymore because of cutbacks in the workstation. I'm not too entirely sure. All I know is this, there's a very few amount of colors to choose from right now. And unfortunately, if we head on over to the KPMF section right here, um, and even though I prefer a satin finish, I think the dynamic lime green looks really good in matte. And of course, that's one of the few colors sold out from KPMF, of course, but look at that color right there. That color is so sick. But yeah, it's pretty slim pickings with KPMF as well. I mean, they have matte iced red titanium, matte iced amethyst titanium, which is like a purple. That one looks pretty cool, but I'm not really a fan too much of purple, enough to wrap my entire truck in it. I really want this green right here. So, so like I said, if KPMF's green does not restock in the next like 10 days or something like that, then I'll probably end up going to 3M and looking for maybe a color flip option. I really like the gloss flip deep space, even though I'm not a fan of glossy wraps because a gloss finish on wraps doesn't look very glossy. It looks more shiny than glossy, and it has a, a lot of orange peel to it as well. So it's very orange peely and very shiny. That's why I don't like prefer the wraps that are glossy too much. But this one right here is pretty cool. It's got a really cool color to it. I believe it's red and blue, which kind of turns like a purple a lot. That's kind of sick. That's pretty sick right there for a gloss finish especially. But yeah, you guys can see right there, if I zoom up on it, you can see on the sides right there, it's very like, it's got a dull sort of finish to it kind of orange peel look. So what do you guys think for a plan B? If the dynamic lime green does not restock sometime in the next, I don't know, we'll give it maybe two weeks, 10 days to two weeks, something like that. If it doesn't restock, what do you guys think of going back to the satin flip volcanic flare from 3M? I'm about it. Are you guys about it? Cause I'm about it. So let me know. But now we are off to the store to grab some paint. Today <laughs> we're spray painting my wheels red. not see that coming at all. This has been the Pep Boys I've been going to since I was 16 years old, out of business. That is crazy. But we're off to another Pep Boys. Hopefully they're not out of business. We'll see though. Just like that, Walmart for the wins. So we have our cans of plastic dip right here. Now, for those of you guys who don't know what this stuff is, it's not actually a paint. Now, there is purpose to what we're doing today. We're not just like doing this for no reason. Plastic dip is not something I would consider to do long term because over time, the stuff does fade and it just it doesn't look that good up close and personal. But good enough to see what these wheels look like in red because my goal for the long term is to see if these wheels look good in red. I want to powder coat these things. I think that looks so sick. I've always wanted red wheels. And I think on the 22s with that deep lip right there, they're not super deep, but deep enough to look pretty cool in red. If I leave these milled inserts right here in that silver color, I think that would look super, super sick. So this right here is kind of like just a little trial thing to see if these wheels look good in red. If they do, I can peel this coating off. It's actually a rubber coating, not really a paint. It does apply like paint, paint. it sprays on, but once it's dried and cured, it peels off in one piece as long as you do enough coat. So that is the goal for today is to see if these wheels look good in red. I'm pretty excited because I've always wanted red wheels. I think that would look pretty, pretty sick. So step number one, I'm gonna prep these wheels, wipe them down really good, get them nice and clean, and put some tire shine on the tires. That way the dip comes off the tires in hopefully one piece. So this stuff right here is called PDA red. So it's, I don't know what that means, but it's definitely not the red I'll do long term. This is more of like a super like hot rod red, and I'd probably do something more along the lines of like a carmine kind of red, something a little darker. This is gonna have a lot of pop, but should be pretty cool. I think these wheels are gonna look pretty sick in a different color. So I say we get to prepping these wheels, the tires, and then get to it.
Now this is where the fun begins. So the entire wheel's all prepped up, it's all wiped down. Shires, shires, wow. Tires are all shined up, the inside of the wheel's all masked off too, the brake calipers, the drum, the rotor, all kind of stuff, so we don't get the red stuff or we don't want it. So, time to start laying down some dip. But what I'm gonna do is lay down a base coat of the blacks. So I don't think I have enough red to do enough coats to fully remove the stuff in one piece. So I'll do one coat with the black and the rest of the coats, however many coats I can get out of three cans per four wheels with the red. like that so we have the black base coats down I actually put two coats of black on each wheel just to make sure we have as many coats as possible so when I go to remove it it comes off in one uniform piece now it's time for the fun part we get to lay down the red plastic dip now I'm hoping to get at least three coats on each wheel but we only have three cans Dude, this looks so sick. Are you kidding me? Look how good that red looks. I'm blown away. The issue is I only have one can left to do one full coat on four wheels. It's taking me exactly two cans so far to get one full coat on four wheels. That's one can per two wheels. I have four wheels left, one can. So we'll see how this goes. Hoping for the best. I'm gonna reverse the truck back to where the bottom of the wheel is on the top and try to get one full coat on each wheel with one can. What? <laughs> what? It was not supposed to come out this good. This looks so <laughs> sick. Are you kidding me? That red's perfect too. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty shocked right now. Honestly, the red that comes from plastic dips is actually a really nice red. It really emphasizes how big these wheels are. Dude, this looks so <laughs> sick. And ah, oh, man, it didn't come out perfect because I, I ran low on material. So it's kind of like, it's a little light here on the inner spoke area, but like from a few feet away, if you're not really picking it apart, you just get an idea of what it would look like if I left the entire truck black. These red wheels look so sick, but I think it was still kind of good. If we were to go the satin flip volcanic flare route, I think that'd be the safer move because that's a darker color than obviously the dynamic lime green. The lime green, I mean, I don't know actually, you know what? I think the lime green would look really good with the red wheels. Actually, huh, I don't know. I mean, obviously these need to be undipped. Like this needs to be peeled off ASAP because the longer that plastic dip stays on whatever it's on, the harder it is to remove. And being that I wasn't able to get like super thick coverage on like especially the inner spoke area, kind of underestimated how much dip I would need for these 22s with the lip. So three cans definitely did not cut it. I'm really glad that I put those two coats of the black down first. That'll definitely help make this a lot easier to remove. But aside from all that stuff, like I'm shook right now. That looks ridiculous. I think it really complements like the black truck a lot and it kind of makes the tires look cooler too. I don't know, it's weird. Like changing the color of the wheels emphasized so many other things on this truck. Like even the tire tread pops more now too. Everything else is way more noticeable now that I broke up the wheel from everything else because I mean they were black and everything else is black like the tires. So having it like separated in color looks really, really cool and the rs letters and the rst right there in red also 
So it just all ties in together. Super uniform look, but I think I'd want to go this route right here instead of the like matte red look because everything from Plastic Dip comes in a matte finish unless you put a gloss fire on top of it. So these are a matte red. I think a chrome red or something like glossy maybe would look a little bit better. I don't know, what do you guys think about that? I think the satin finish looks really good on the wheels right now because the rest of the body is gloss, but if the wrap that I'm putting on there is gonna be a satin or a matte, I think the wheels might look a little bit better in gloss. I don't know, what do you guys think about that right there? I'm not too certain about that one right now, but I, I, just, I feel like that would be the move. You know I'm not the best at flying these drones. I have a knack for flying them into trees and cement poles, but we're good. This one barely, barely grazed that tree right there, so we're chilling. And that is pretty much gonna be a wrap for today's video. Super fun little project, super cheap too. The dip's like six bucks a can times five cans, 30 bucks. Super cheap little project, super easy to install, but it needs to come off in the next couple of days because I do not wanna deal with the horror of removing plastic from my wheels that's stuck on there from the side of making it on. So, hope you guys enjoyed, but that's all I have for you guys today. I will catch you guys on the next one. Until then, peace out.